Hi, my name's Kevin Benison. I'm the Managing Director and Lead Consultant at SWL Training Limited. Now, recently we launched our new lifting operations pocket assistant. For those of you who have purchased one already, thank you very much and I hope you are finding some value in it. Anybody who has not got one already, just to remind you of the key benefits. Well, it is A6, so it fits into the pocket nicely and it can be carried with you on site or wherever you may need to work. And unlike many of the other pocket books that are available, you know, they are often full of a lot of text and can be quite difficult to find the information you need. So this is just nine pages of key, clear information. Uh, the information that you most commonly find is needed when you're carrying out your lifting operations and even planning. So it's concise and it's got diagrams in there to assist as well. It's nice and clear. And it's also printed on waterproof material. So therefore it's not going to be damaged by, of course, water or things like oil and other lubricants that you may come into contact with on site. So you don't need to worry about taking out your pocket and the possibility of it being ruined because you can generally then just wipe that off. Uh, afterwards. Unlike some of the other booklets where it's printed on perhaps at best glossy paper and will be ruined if you take it out in the wet. Now we did say that we were going to do some videos to help people with the information that's in the pocket assistant and increase understanding. So this is one of those videos. This video is about the information which is on page 9 which is about wind speed calculations so, as I say, you'll find that on page 9, and we're actually going to use the example with, with, that's within that page to assist you with understanding how to do the wind speed calculations. Looking at the key elements of our wind speed calculations. So, AP represents sail area of the load. Now, that may be a little bit more complex than just simply one side, you know, the greatest side area of a load. It could be that perhaps some of the end of the load or indeed the underside or the top of the load is also exposed to wind. It's essentially the shadow area. On this we'll just keep it simple and we'll just go by the area of the largest side. So in this case we've gone for 8 metre length by 2.5 metre high resulting in a sail area of 20 square metres. The next element is resistance coefficient. So CW as the symbol is for that. Now what that is about is how the wind will actually behave when it hits the load. Is it going to pass around easily or is there going to be a lot of drag when the wind actually hits the load which will result in an increased resistance coefficient. Now the official line is you get the resistance coefficient from the manufacturer or designer but that may be difficult to obtain. Within BS7121, British Standard 7121, Safe Use of Cranes, Part 1, there are uh, basic load shapes with estimated resistance coefficient values for those different load shapes. So, if you're unsure, you can just use the shape of the load and estimate it based on the shape of that load and those approximate values. The other element is M which is our gross load weight, load mass essentially. Bear in mind for mobile and crawler cranes, not only will you allow the lifting accessories as part of your load weight, you'll also allow the hook block. So M represents the complete load weight. The other, other element, V max, is the maximum permitted wind speed. That's what we're going to be calculating. That's the maximum wind speed you can lift in based on the load you're lifting and the crane you're using. The only other element as well which we'll come on to shortly within our calculation is this V chart. So V chart is the maximum wind speed that's given for the configuration of the crane being used. So when you look at a crane load chart you'll generally see below the different boom lengths you've got a maximum wind speed for that boom length. Now that is based on certain load characteristics which are detailed within the European standards EN 13000 um, and actually it goes by a, a ratio of one square meter 
area to one tonne of load with a, with a resistance coefficient of 1.2. So as soon essentially for simple thinking, if you've got more than a square metre of area per tonne of load, so for example two square metres to the tonne, the chances are you're going to have to then reduce the maximum wind speed uh, for that load for the crane being used. Now, so going on to our calculation then, well, we've got some values here we've considered, and these are in accordance with the example given in the pocket assistant on page 9. So we've got a CW value of 1.4 that we've gone for, and the load weight, gross load weight is 15.5 tonnes. Now, this calculation here can look a little bit complex. However, I'll break it down. It is not as tricky as it initially appears. So it's just understanding it, simplifying it, and we'll go through a way which is a little bit easier. So what we're trying to work out is this V max, the maximum permitted wind speed. The way to do the calculation is we take the V chart value, so the maximum wind speed given in the load charts, and we're going to multiply that by the square root of 1.2 times the load weight divided by the sail area times the resistance coefficient. Seems complex? Yes, it isn't actually. As long as you've got a square root function on your calculator, the little tick, then you're going to be fine. Now, just so you're clear, this 1.2 does not change. That's in accordance with the standard 1.2 resistance coefficient that the manufacturers are required to calculate the charts in accordance with, you know, the European standards. So that doesn't change. These values will, as will this. So we know these here. The only one that we haven't got is the V chart. So we'll consider that we've looked at the crane that we're using and the configuration, the boom length, and it gives us a maximum wind speed for standard load conditions of 12.8 meters per second. So that's the figure that we've used in the pocket assistant on page 9. Now, it's just about going through this in a simple way. The easiest way I find to go through this is actually work backwards. So work from this end and come back. What we'll do then is we'll start off with this and then divide it by this. Then we can square root it. Then we can multiply it by the V chart. That's going to give us our V max rather than working this way. Let's start off then with 1.2 times the mass, times the gross load weight. So 1.2 times our 15.5 so you can work that out with your calculator but that gives us 18.6 and then the second part we'll take this so AP times CW well AP in the case of this load is 20 our sail area is 20 square meters and we're going to multiply that by 1.4 so we have 20 times 1.4, which of course gives us 28. That's actually called the wind loading area. So that would be a wind loading area of 28 square metres. What we need to do then, just as we've got here, we're dividing the top by the bottom. So we're dividing 18.6 by 28. So you can do that on your calculator. 18.6 divided by 28 gives us 0 0.6643. Depends on how many decimal places you want to go to, of course. But that gives us 0 0.6643. Now what we've got then is we have the total created by this. This is the result of this part within the square root. The next thing you need to do is just using the little tick symbol on your calculator, the square root function, we need to square root that. So if you square root that figure, it then comes out as 0 0.81504. Again, just depend on how many decimal places you actually want to use. So 
The result of that then equals all this bit having been done. Quite simple. We just went the opposite way. We started there, got that, then we done that and got that, then we divided the top by the bottom, which was this by this, then we square rooted it, giving us the 0 0.81504. All we've got left to do is multiply it by that V chart value. So in this case, by 12.8 meters per second. So multiply that by 12.8 and that gives us 10.43. Which means the maximum wind speed that we can actually work to with that load on the crane, for example, that we've used, we've considered we've used a certain crane, and that's how we got that. So the maximum wind speed we can actually work to then is 10.43 meters per second. And that's how you work out your maximum wind speed. Just as a reminder then, if you haven't got your uh, lift and operations pocket assistant, then you can purchase that from our website, swltraining.com. Now, if you found value in the video and it helps you with it, please share it so others can help be benefit, you know, benefit from it too and be helped by it. And uh, best wishes for using your pocket assistant. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.